Welcome back to Snowrunner, guys, and in this video, we are going to be comparing Red's Chevy K30 mod to the standard Ford F750, which is fully built with all in-game upgrades. There aren't any modded upgrades on this truck. Now, if you look at the trucks, I tried to get them as close as I possibly could. The K30 is running a 39-inch Baja Claw, and the F750 is running an in-game UOD2, which was the closest tire I could find to a Baja Claw. And while the tires on the F750 may be ever so slightly bigger, they should be close enough to the same size for it to be a fair comparison. I also made sure that the power-to-weight ratings for these trucks came in at the same. So that's why the, uh, the K30 has stuff in the bed, whereas the 750... The 750 has stuff in the bed, but it also has the sort of support attachment. So your power to weight on the K30 is a B plus, and the power to weight on the F750 is an A minus. Now I tried to get them a little bit closer, but it seemed as though it seemed as though every time I tried to get it any closer than that, it started to throw things off a little bit. So B plus and A minus, I felt that it was just close enough for it to be fair. And we are going to be using the Truck Night in America OG Challenge to compare these two trucks. Of course, comparing their off-road abilities and comparing how they drive, like solely how they drive. And just as a quick disclaimer, the K30 is running the small block, not the big block for this challenge. Like I said, in the interest of keeping the power to weight ratios as similar as possible. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and fire up the K30 and get down the course. What do you say to that, Beans, huh? You ready, bud? Let's go! Now, I should also mention that this truck is running the off-road gearbox, and I figured that the off-road gearbox would potentially be the, again, the most fair approach to it. So let's see, diving into the first mud pit. Running it in high, all-wheel drive with the diff locks off, varying the throttle a little bit, and as expected, you can't vary the throttle all that much in high range when you are using the base engine. Now, if you had the extra power and torque of the big block, that would probably be a little bit easier. So, moving on now, it did it did a pretty good job, though. I've got to admit, did a pretty good freaking job. All right, up the concrete blocks now. Throwing it back into automatic mode, leaving the all-wheel drive on, and I'm probably just going to put it in high for this hill climb. Pretty good, pretty straightforward approach. If you want to run it in high in the mud with the small block and the big tires, you pretty much just have to stay flat out to keep it up in the RPMs. Otherwise, it, it really doesn't have enough torque to overcome the gear ratio and, and the resistance of the tires and really keep them spinning. So let's put it back into automatic mode, see if it'll get itself up into fourth gear, which it does. Let's see how long it holds that. Probably not very long. That's why I just went and put it back into high, because I was like, you know what? I'm not going to worry about, you know, what it's going to do in automatic. Although, I got to say, it's doing a really good job at lumbering its way through here in high. Now, the next section is the one that I'm a little bit worried about, because obviously we don't really have a lot of speed for the run-up going in. It just kind of uh, plunges itself in, and that's it. However, let's see how long we can keep it going if we stay. Oh, yep, yep, she done. Come on. I should also mention that so far, we have zero damage. Like, straight up zero damage, which I think is awesome. I absolutely love the fact that, you know, this thing is like, this thing is doing this with no damage so far anyway. And, I mean, we haven't been exactly what you would call nice to it either. So, really doing a good job getting through here. So, this is the section where I am going to leave the diff lock on and leave it in low plus. And if we're going to get any damage, it's probably going to be here because I'll probably end up smacking the front end into the rocks at some point or another, giving us a bit of engine damage. Good articulation in the suspension, even though we are dealing with a leaf spring setup, it still does a really good job. Let's see if it can walk its way up that. Woo! Scraped the bumper a little bit, but not enough to cause any damage. Enough to cause a little bit of body damage, but I mean, you know, battle scars, don't worry about it. There you go, find your footing. Not bad, K30, not bad. Not bad, especially for such a long wheelbase truck. I absolutely love it. I love the job it's doing too. Oh no, oh no, oh God. Starting to find a little bit of resistance here. 
Let's try that one more time. Pick a better line. Once you pick a better line, you're you're much better off. Good to go. The tires are just big enough that it doesn't scrape the underbody of the truck coming up over the top of the, uh, the rocky hill climb. So now over the bridges. Should be pretty easy down through here. The logs I'm a little concerned about. I'm not quite sure how it's going to react. I mean, obviously we're about to find out, but let's see. Not too bad. Oh, all right. Gotten into a bit of a sticky situation there, but again, the tires are just big enough to maintain contact with the ground to keep us moving along. Good job, though. Good, 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 good showing from the K30 there. All right, I'm going to try to leave it in automatic mode and see if, see if it'll just keep me in fourth gear. How you doing, Beans? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit of an up and down going on there, huh? God, Beans' head is just like, oh, it's just way up in the air. That's legit. Although, still, no damage. Brilliant suspension tuning. Like, even though this is the standard model, this is not the ultimate edition, as it were. This is the standard model. So, great run there. Great showing. Not necessarily the fastest run ever, but that wasn't the purpose of that run. So, now, let's give it a shot in the 750. Now, the 750 does have a little bit of an advantage, being that it has diff lock always engaged. Diff lock always engaged definitely does give it a little bit of an advantage in the mud. Um, and also the fact that it has a advanced gearbox, which gives it all of the low ranges as well as six gears in automatic mode as opposed to four in the K30. So a little bit of a difference there, but wow, lumbers through the first mud pit very easily, actually. No suspension damage there, even with a big bounce, which is really surprising for the 750 because the 750, especially with the big lift, is really susceptible to, uh, to big, big amounts of damage. Now, I've just noticed something. I forgot to put a snorkel on it, and I will accept full responsibility for that. And let me just go ahead and throw a snorkel on it. Where is... let's see. Well, wait. Hey, there we go. That's the snorkel we need. That's the snorkel we need. And you know what? I'm going to repair and refuel it because all of that damage just then came from submerging the engine. So that's A, that is not repairing unfairly. And B, this is actually, in all fairness, trying to keep it on the same playing field as the K30 because the K30 had a snorkel, didn't get any water damage. And I want to give this thing the same, the same amount of... Uh, of basically the same opportunity to not get engine damage from the water um, because it wouldn't have if it had the snorkel. So, easing her through there. It's doing really well so far, especially on this setup. I mean, this setup has proven to be really good. Haven't picked up any damage just yet, but let's see how it does in the deep water. The deep water is where I'm expecting to see it show a little bit of its flaws. Um, and if it does have any flaws, this is definitely where it's going to show them. Wow, even with a hit like that, it didn't damage the the engine or the suspension, and it fell straight onto a rock. So that's that's really impressive. Let's put it in low plus for this. I believe that's what we used in the K30 in here was low plus. I don't think we ever really had to put the K30 in anything lower than low plus. Ooh, ooh, she's spinning. Come on. Gotta work the steering if you want to actually make progress through here with this thing. This thing gets beached so easily on the rocks. You just have to keep working the steering back and forth. Find the grip on the exit. Should be pretty easy. We'll work our way up the side. All right, good. And then we'll attack this from a diagonal standpoint. Ow. Yeah, figured that was going to happen. Okay, yeah, that's where, that's where that big overhang of the 750 is going to come into play. Oh, no! I'll give this thing one winch, but I'm not going to winch it forward. I'm going to winch it back. I'll give this thing one winch, and I'll give her, that'll give us an opportunity to try again on a slightly different line. And it'll also give me an opportunity to rethink the approach that I take in this thing because, you know, when I get out of something like the K30 that really doesn't have that issue with dragging the underbody on this terrain, I, I feel like, you know, I get out of that... And I get into the 750, and I expect it to perform almost the same. And boy, it does not. Walked up the same line, relatively speaking, though, as the as the K. Ow! As the K30, I did not mean to launch myself into that rock. I fell off of that rock back there, 
and it just kind of rocketed me forward and was like, no, you're you're not gonna do that. You are going you are going straight ahead, and that is the only way you are going, bro. All right, let's go. Go 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 go. Oh no! All right, we have enough room, thankfully, to back up. Let's try and go up one more time. Just third gear, bumped it into high, trying to go a little diagonal. I was perfectly okay with hitting that tree if that had to be, you know, the way that I made it over the top of that thing. Because you have to, in this thing, you have to angle it. You have to angle it. Now, obviously, if we're basing it off of the idea of who finished with the least damage, the K30 is the clear winner. And honestly, I'm going to leave that up to you guys in the comments down below. Let me know which one you think was the winner in both capability and or uh, and or style. Oh, wow, that, that actually stayed in high. All the way through the log obstacle, it basically like, it like, it was basically hovering above the logs, kind of like a skateboard grinding a rail. That's kind of weird, but hey, it works. And if it works, it works. The suspension tuning on this is weird compared to the K30, though. It's a lot bouncier. But yeah, let me know in the comment section down below which one you guys think won. Let me know which one you guys would drive home. And let me know which one would end up in your driveway. And that is going to do it for this video, guys. If you did enjoy, make sure, yet again, to leave your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Turn those notifications on. And I'll see you guys next time.